Hello and welcome to Mrs. Sewell's Music Lesson. We're already on Lesson 6. As you can see, today we're going to do a bit of a revision puzzle challenge. So you will need um, a pen or a pencil and some paper for it. But before we get into it, we're actually going to start by revising something we did back in week one. We're going to sing our song Rhythm in the Way We Walk because hopefully this will jog our memory for some of the things we need in our challenge later in the lesson. So here we go. Hopefully you can remember the um, actions. in the song we've been looking at we've looked at pulse what is our pulse it's our steady beat that goes all the way through the music of course rhythm and our rhythm we've done lots of work on reading rhythms and clapping rhythms and saying our rhythms those are our different note values that we put together and then pitch pitch is high and pitch is low and those melodies and songs that we all know and we've begun now to look at how we write pitch on the stave on our five lines we can put our pitch on there and those are the things that we're definitely going to need today for our challenge so let's see if we can get into it and oh no the evil Griselda has decided that she is the best musician in the world and no one else is allowed to learn to play any music <gasps> if you can figure out the missing words in the potion we can save music so oh my goodness it sounds like that evil Griselda has made a magic potion and we need to find the ingredients so let's have a look at what these are hmm we need to find some purple pickled, some kind of vegetable, slimy, sticky mm, insect, some kind of size murky mushrooms, nine eyed something newts, a number of tiny tarantulas, and then a colour for limp something leaves. Mm, okay, let's get straight into it and see if we can work out these puzzles. So, puzzle one. These potions were found in the kitchen. They could be useful. So let's have a look. Here is our potion. We've got newt, spider, unicorn dust and grubs. And we've also got these two rhythms. I think we have to see which rhythm matches the potion. So let's say this potion we get newt, spider, unicorn dust, grubs. Hmm, say it with me and Newt, spider, unicorn dust, grubs. It's hard for me to say. Hopefully you can't, aren't stumbling over that one. Newt, spider, unicorn dust, grubs. Let's clap it together. Newt, spider, unicorn dust, grubs. Newt, spider, unicorn dust, grubs. So, looking at our rhythms then, which one of those matches up with our potion? Let's have a look again. 
cute spider unicorn cross cross. So I'm going to say write down the letter that matches that rhythm. Here we go then. Let's try the next one. <gasps> Spiders, cobwebs, dust, slime. Say it with me. Spiders, cobwebs, dust, slime. Let's clap it. Spiders, cobwebs, dust, slime. Spiders, cobwebs, dust, slime. Which one of our rhythms written out here is that? Write down the letter that matches up to that rhythm. Here we go. Next one. Oh, now this one has got a times two. So I'm going to guess whatever we letter, whatever letter we end up with, we have to write it out twice. So let's look at our potion first. Flies, frog toe, slime, pumpkin. The thought of a frog toe. Oh, do you like frogs? I say I'm not keen. Not keen on a frog and a frog toe. Oh, that makes me quiver. So, but let's just concentrate on the rhythm. It goes flies, frog, toe, slime, pumpkin. Let's see if we can say it together. Flies, frog, toe, slime, pumpkin. Let's clap it. Flies, frog, toe, slime, pumpkin. Do it one more time. Flies, frog, toe, slime. Which one of these rhythms matches that potion so whichever one it is you need to actually write it out twice because you've got a times two let's carry on next potion hmm earthworm chicken toenails ivy mud chicken toenails well, again that makes me feel funny earthworm chicken toenails ivy mud let's say it together earthworm chicken toenails ivy mud let's see if we can clap it Earthworm, chicken, toenails, ivy, nut. One more time. And earthworm, chicken, toenails, ivy, nut. It's, it's making me feel very queasy, folks. I have to be honest. Which one of our rhythms does that match up to our potion? Let's go again. Write down the letter with the corresponding rhythm. Moving along. Here we go. Oh. These potions are getting more gruesome. Let's have a look. Blood, brains, guts, slime. Say it with me. Blood, brains, guts, slime. Let's clap it. Blood, brains, guts, slime. Oh, one more time. And blood, brains, guts, slime. Which one of those rhythms matches up? Write down the corresponding letter. Here we go. Oh, no, I hope this is the last potion we have to deal with because so they're making my tummy feel funny. Here we go. We've got skeleton dust spiders, earthworm grit. Let's say that together. Skeleton dust spiders, earthworm grit. See if we can clap it. Skeleton dust spiders, earthworm grit. One more time. Skeleton dust spiders, earthworm grit. One last time. Skeleton dust spiders, so which one of these rhythms matches up to that potion? Write down the corresponding letter. Now, I think we should now have a word. If you've managed to match up all the rhythms to the potions, the word we should have spelt out is massive. So our first ingredient is massive murky mushrooms well done if you managed to get those all correct but our first word is massive murky mushrooms okay let's move on i think here comes challenge two we've found griselda's tablet can you work out the code hmm now let's see so here we've got the code that we need to work out and we're going to have to figure out these letters so I think if we look for this symbol on the tablet, can we find that symbol on the tablet is over here? And then underneath, what do we have here? Do you remember what they are called? Semiquavers, well done. So we've got our semiquavers, our ticker tickers. Then if we come over here, one semiquaver equals the letter B. But there's not one semiquaver, there's one set of semiquavers, but there's actually four semiquavers there. So I'm not sure it's B. Five lines of the stave, it's not that. 
two beat minim, it's not that, quaver rest, no, one beat crotchet, no, four semiquavers, aha, four semiquavers, that's what we need, four semiquavers there, four semiquavers here, equal P, so our first letter is going to be P. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this up on the screen and I want you to pause your video and see, can you work out the other letters? Can you crack the code? Good luck. So, hopefully now you have cracked that code. Hopefully you found all these symbols on the tablet, you saw the musical symbol and then you found out what letter it corresponds to. So, the question is, what word did you spell? What was it? It was a vegetable. Potatoes! That's right, well done. So, our second ingredient and our special potion is purple pickled potatoes. Good work. Right, here we go. Challenge number three. True or false? Here we go. Are you good at true or false? I like to think I am, but we have 50-50 chance, really, don't we? Here we go. Let's see how well you can do. True or false? If these are semiquavers, write the letter S. So that's the question. Are those semiquavers? Think back to our previous challenge and that should give you the answer. If those are semiquavers, write the letter S. If they're not, don't write anything. Next one. True or false? So if one semibreve is the same as six crotchets, write the letter M. Hmm. How many beats does a semibreve last for? Is it six? I'm not sure it is six. So if one semi-breathe is the same as six crotchets, write the letter M. I'm not sure it is, so maybe don't write it, but this is up to you, your musical knowledge. Next one. If the pitch gets higher as notes go up the stave, write the letter N. So here are my notes on the stave. Da, 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 da. If the pitch gets higher as the notes go up, write the letter N. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Does the pitch go up as they go up the stave? Does the pitch get higher? If it does, write the letter N. Next one. If a pair of quavers equals a crotchet, write the letter A. So if a pair of quavers equals the same number of beats as a crotchet, write the letter A. So does that equal that? Hmm, that's a question. If it does, write down the letter A. If tempo means how loud you play the music, add the letter P. Now we did work on tempo, didn't we? But do you remember, was tempo about how loud the music was? If it is about that, if tempo means how loud you play, write down the letter P. If tempo doesn't mean how loud you play, then don't write anything. Hmm. Here we go. If an ostinato is a repeated musical phrase or rhythm, add the letter I. Hmm. So an ostinato. Again, we did ostinatos, didn't we? We had a whole lesson about ostinatos. So if an ostinato is a repeated musical phrase or rhythm, add the letter I. Okay. And here we go. This is the last one of these. If the pulse is not made up of note values of different lengths, write the letter L. So again, we've done lots of work on pulse. What is the pulse? If the pulse is not made up of note values of different lengths, write the letter L. So if it is made up of notes of different values, is it? Isn't it? I don't know. Let's think about that. If the pulse is not made up of note values of different lengths, so think about the pulse. Are they all different lengths? Have we got some short ones and some long ones? Or are they all the same? Hmm. Let's find out. Question is, 
what word did you end up spelling? Let's see, it should be snail. So our third ingredient, slimy, sticky snail. Oh my goodness, these potions. What is Griselda thinking? Whew, nasty. Okay, here we go. On to our next challenge. Are you ready? Griselda has left some music lying around. Which bars can you hear? Write down the letters. Now, that messy old Griselda, she's written this music down, but it's also got dots all over it. Maybe she's making a terrible mess of it, so I hope you can see. I'll project it up bigger, but we're going to listen to the music and see if we can pick out what bar is that gets played. Let's listen now. was it now I can tell this is piano music because it's got the two lines on it so we have our top line and our bottom line and they get played together so we're going to listen one more time and see can we work out which bar was it that was played so let's listen now hmm. now I don't know about you but listening out for that rhythm is really going to help me did it start off? Did we have a crotchet and a rest and a crotchet and a rest? Were two hands playing? This bar's got nothing in the left hand. This one's got rests. These have got minims, our two beats note. We're going to listen one more time and see if we can work out which bar it was that was played. Okay, whichever bar it was, write down that letter. And then here we go. We're going to listen out for the next one. Ready? Hmm. So we've got to try and figure out, haven't we, which bar that was. It was different, wasn't it, to the first bar. It had fewer notes in it. So let's listen one more time and see if we can work out that rhythm. Okay, they definitely had some rests in it. So I'm going to look, we've got to be possibly, I think, one of these two bars. Let's listen one more time and see if you can work it out. Okay, so write down the letter of the bar that it was. Here we go again. Our next bar, let's listen together. quite a few notes in it. That rhythm at the beginning of the bar was quite fast. Let's listen one more time and see if we can work out which bar it was. Hmm. <laughs> what did it start with? What rhythm did we start with? What rhythm did we start with? Hmm. I think it was some semiquavers at the beginning of the bar. So listening out for semiquavers and see if you can work out which one of our bars it was. Here we go again. Okay, so write down the letter of the corresponding bar. So we should have three letters now. You should have three letters written down. We're going for number four. Are you ready? Let's listen. Again, there was some rests in that bar, wasn't it? So let's listen one more time and see if we can pinpoint that rhythm and... Hmm. With similar rhythm we've had before, isn't it? But what we need to think about as well is the pitch. The pitch, because if we look at these bars with these similar rhythms, here, these two notes are very close to each other on the stage, so their pitch is very close. Here, the notes are very far away, so their pitch is very different. 
We've also got nothing else played in this bar, whereas here we've got one note. So let's listen one more time and see if we can work out which bar it was. Well done. So write down the letter that corresponds to that bar that you heard. And here we go. This is our last one being played now. And... was a very different bar. We've not had a bar like that so far, have we? Let's listen one more time. So how did it start? What was the rhythm at the beginning of that bar? Which one does it fit with? Hmm, I think there are two bars that are very similar, aren't they? So again, we need to listen out for the pitch and see does our, I think they were very similar, these two bars, does our, our music, does it go ba da da, all in step, ba da ba, that one goes a little bit higher, that one goes down, this one goes down even further, and then listening to our left hand as well. So our left hand here is lower, and up there is higher. Let's listen one more time and see if we can work out which bar it was. Okay, so write down the letter that corresponds to the bar and then hopefully we should now have a word. The question is, what word did you spell? It was nasty. Well done. So our fourth ingredient, nine-eyed nasty newts. Oh, I didn't even know newts could be nasty. I thought all newts were lovely creatures, but... Nine-eyed nasty newts is what we've got to. Right, we now need our fifth ingredient, our fifth challenge. Are you ready? Griselda loves colour by numbers, but instead of written numbers, she uses beats. Hmm, okay, I have to say I like paint by numbers is one of my favourite things, but Griselda's into colour by numbers, so we've got a crotchet, we've got a tar. How many beats does that equal? And we've got underneath our crotchet rest. How many beats? Because this number of beats is important, but it comes in many different forms. So tell me, how many beats in a crotchet? Of course, one beat, isn't it? So one beat. And the same for crotchet rest is one beat. Now, already Griselda has started because she's coloured in the crotchet and she's coloured in the crotchet rest already. So we need to go through the lines. We need to see which ones equal one beat, equal one crotchet. So let's go across. Here is our pair of quavers. Do they equal one beat? Of course they do, because they're half a beat each. TT equals one beat, so let's colour that one in. Let's move along. A crotchet, well that's super easy, isn't it? Because we've already coloured one of those in, the crotchet goes. Next row, four semi-quavers, ticker, 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 ticker. Does that add up to one beat? Yes, it does. We learnt that, didn't we? Four semi-quavers equals one beat. They're a quarter note, quarter of a beat each. So here we have one semi-quaver. One semi-quaver, does that equal one beat? One semi-quaver? We've just said, didn't we? It's a quarter, so we're not going to colour that one in. Here we go, we've got four semi-quavers. That looks familiar, so let's colour that one in. And then down here we've got a pair of quavers. Again, we've already answered that one. They're half a beat each, so together they make one. One quaver. It's not a beat, is it? We know that is half a beat, so we're not going to colour that one in. That crotchet rest is done. We're now back to a crotchet. That's easy peasy, one beat. Now, we've not done any work on these yet in our music. We're going to come to them after half term. This is a minim, and it lasts for two beats. So... Do we colour that one in? Of course we don't. It's a two beat note, not a one beat note. How about here, our crotchets? Of course, that's gonna get coloured. Our crotchet rest? Are we gonna colour that one? Of course we are. How about this, our crotchet? Yes. And then finally, a pair of quavers. Do we colour that one in? 
Yes, we do. Now, just to make it all look even, I'm also going to colour in the two that Griselda's has already done. I'll crotch it and I'll crotch it rest. So the question now is, how many sweets did we end up colouring in? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve sweets coloured in. So how many? Twelve. So our fifth ingredient now is twelve tiny tarantulas. I wasn't aware tarantulas came in a tiny size. I don't like them any size that they are, but whoa. okay. On to our last puzzle. Are you ready? Crossword by candlelight. Now let's have a closer look at this and see if we can work it out. Griselda likes to do crosswords by candlelight, but she always likes to work backwards and then circles the important letters. My goodness, we've already got a struggle here. Candlelight backwards as well, and then we've got to find the letters. Okay, let's have a closer look, because I think these candles are quite important. What do we have first of all? Hmm. On our first candle over here, we have a crotchet, a crotchet. And then on this candle, what do we have? This squiggly thing, it's called a treble clef. That's right. So if we look and see on here on our crossword, we're doing these two and we've got to write the word backwards. So in here, we're going to put crotchet written backwards. And in here, we're going to put treble Clef. Let's have a look and see how that looks. Just like that, crotchet, and then we've got treble clef. Now, let's have a look at these other candles. Now, this first candle, we've not seen this symbol before, but on there it looks like a B or a weird way round P or a Q or something. It's not. This symbol in our music means a flat and it's a type of note. We can flatten a note by putting this symbol in it, but I'm going to just tell you that is a flat. Now this next one, you know what this middle one is. It's a quaver. We've seen those before. We've done a pair of quavers. That is one quaver all by itself. And then finally, our last one again, you've seen this before. It's our semi-quaver. We've done four semi-quavers together. That is one semi-quaver by itself. Now these are gonna go up in our crossword. So if you look here, we put flat, and then we put in semi-quaver, and we put in quaver. So it works on our crossword. What we have to do now though is notice all the important letters that have been circled. So here on our crotchet line we've got a C. On our treble clef line we've got an L. On our flat we've got an L. On our semi-quaver it's an I. And on our quaver it's an A. So I need you to write those down. Write down crotchet equals C, flat equals L, treble clef equals L, semi quaver equals I, and quaver equals A. Because then we've got to sort out our code, haven't we? Can you remember what letter did you write down for our flat? What letter was the important letter? L, of course it was. For our semi-quaver, it was I. What about that treble clef line? What was the letter on our treble clef line? L, well done. And on our quaver, we had our important letter as A. And then our crotchet was C. Very good. So our code, our crossword code, becomes lilac. How does that fit in with our potion? Let's have a look. Lilac. So our sixth ingredient is limp 
lilac leaves. Oh, well done if you got all of those. It was a tricky one, that cross crossword. So now I think we've found all of the ingredients. I think we've managed to save music. Let's go through and check. So what was the one of the words? We have purple pickled potatoes. Then we had slimy, sticky snail. Very good. What size were those murky mushrooms? They were massive, of course. Nine-eyed nasty newts. Then how many tiny tarantulas did we find? Twelve. And of course, we finished off with our limp lilac leaves. Very well done indeed. So hopefully you've remembered and revised all your musical knowledge that we've been learning over these past few weeks. Great work. Have a good half term and I'll see you afterwards.